Get ready for a classic monster movie adaptation with a twist. When a young boy bears witness to Dr. Frankenstein's misdeeds, will the boy take revenge against the evil scientist in the name of his father? Let's find out in our review of Universal Monsters Frankenstein number 1 from Image Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Universal Monsters Frankenstein number 1. You know, Image Comics and Skybound keep churning out hits by reinvigorating classic characters and properties for a new generation of comic readers. This time, writer-artist Michael Walsh takes a crack at the Frankenstein legend with a mild twist on the film version of the monster's tale. Does this adaptation twist the legendary story enough to break it? Or does a new angle give readers a fresh perspective on an old story? For now, let's call it a TBD. So let's jump right in. Universal Monsters Frankenstein number one begins with a familiar scene in a graveyard. A young boy is weeping over his father's grave, lamenting the harsh treatment he receives from the other boys in the orphanage because his father recently died. So the pain and the angst associated with losing your parent is still pretty fresh. When the boy hears men approaching, he scurries over to a hiding spot that's close enough to see what's happening. The boy is shocked to see two men, in this case Dr. Frankenstein and his assistant, Fritz, digging up his father's grave. Mike Walsh begins the tale perfectly with a high degree of familiar settings and atmosphere while adding the young orphan boy as a new element to the film. The boy acts as the audience surrogate, which is the significant twist of this adaptation, but the boy largely acts as a hidden observer until the very end of the issue. So even though it feels like it's a different version of the tale, most of what you see and hear is pretty familiar. After the Doctor and Fritz complete the dirty deed, the Doctor laments that the body's brain is useless due to a head trauma. But he's interested in other parts, so the men load the body up onto a cart. The boy quietly stows away on the cart to see where the men are taking his father's body. When the cart reaches Dr. Frankenstein's castle, the boy leaps into the nearby bushes and surrounding stones and rocks before he's spotted. And he follows the men into the castle from a safe distance. The boy soon witnesses the miracle and horror of Frankenstein's creation come to life. Just to hit the point home, so far the boy's part of the story runs parallel to the events of the film without any significant changes. Even Dr. Frankenstein's classic dialogue remains unchanged from the film you already know. So if you're a fan of the original Universal Monsters Frankenstein from 1931, you're going to see the same story elements play out beat for beat identically. But the boy is acting sort of in those spaces in between scenes to give you sort of the story within the story. Later, the boy pays the monster a visit, believing the monster is his father brought back to life. Unfortunately, he also learns that the only part of the monster used from his father's body are his hands. Overcome with grief, the boy endeavors to stop the doctor from defiling anyone else's loved ones after their death. And then the issue concludes with medical tools, an ambush, and an unsettling pledge from somebody you didn't expect. Overall, Universal Monsters Frankenstein number 1 is a relatively faithful adaptation of the 1931 film, but Michael Walsh's twist presents the opportunity for fresh ideas that allow readers to see the old story in a new light. That said, the boy's role as protagonist is almost entirely passive until the very end, so it remains to be seen how fresh those new ideas will be until we get to the next issue and the next and the next. Let's switch gears a bit and talk about the art. Michael Walsh pulls double duty as writer and penciler and inker on this miniseries, and the results are, to be honest, commendable. Walsh envelops the entire book with gothic shadows and a moody atmosphere to give readers the same feeling as the black and white film. Very gothic, very spooky, very, very much ingrained in that old classic Hollywood horror type of vibe. That said, Tony Marie Griffin's top-notch coloring palette and application give the comic an otherworldly, almost Lovecraftian feel that plays to the strengths of Walsh's composition style. In short, the comic looks spooky, which is exactly what you want from this type of adaptation. Let's take a step back, look at the big picture, and maybe some interesting historical trivia here. In the Universal film Frankenstein, released in 1931, and in this comic, Dr. Frankenstein's assistant is a character named Fritz, which is a bit of a departure from what most people would associate as Dr. Frankenstein's assistant, which we would typically imagine as a hunchback named Igor. But that's not the case in the film and in this comic. But did you also know that the person who played Fritz in the 1931 film is an actor by the name of Dwight Schultz, 
He also played in the 1931 version of Dracula, the character of Renfield. So you have a lot of cross-pollination and continuity against all the universal monsters. And it's a fun little bit of trivia that you can bring out at a party. Final thoughts, what do we think about Universal Monsters Frankenstein number one? It adapts the 1931 film with a twist by telling the story from a new observer's point of view. Michael Walsh's reverence for the source material in the script is spot on, and the gothic moody art nails the spooky atmosphere perfectly. Therefore, Universal Monsters Frankenstein number one earns a solid 8.5 out of 10. Skybound's approach to readapting the classic Universal films with a twist has largely been successful except for a little bump or two here and there. But what do you think? Have you been picking up Skybound's Universal Monsters collection? And if so, which one is your favorite? Leave us a thumbs up if you have been picking them up and drop a comment below with which monster you think should get adapted next. My money's on the Wolfman. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.